Happy Thursday! Today is Thursday, July the 1st, 2021. Today's daily Bible readings come to us from Psalm 48, 2 Samuel 2, 1 through 11, 1 Corinthians 4, 8 through 13, Psalm 123, Jeremiah 7, 1 through 15, and then 1 Corinthians 4, 8 through 13 again. So, once again, the semi continuous readings and the complementary readings. I'm going to take a look at Jeremiah 7, 1 through 15 today. Uh, and talk about deceptive words. Uh, So here's the deal. Jeremiah warns the nation of Judea and the people of Jerusalem that they, 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 they presume too much, that they've kind of, they've, they've, they're living on an assumption um, because in spite of the fact that they do all sorts of horrible things, things that God is telling them here, God uses the word abomination in this text, they're doing all these horrible things, um, things that God doesn't like, uh, things that violate the covenant he made with them in the first place, uh, the covenant which even allows them to dwell in the land that they're in. Because remember, early on, God refers to this as his land. It's a land that he gives to them, that he allows them to live in with the stipulation that they behave in a certain way. You know, like, yeah, you can you can crash here as long as you want, just don't be jerks, right? Um, so they do all these horrible things, things that violate the covenant, the very covenant that allows them to be there in the first place. Um, and in spite of all this, they think they're safe, right? They, they do all this stuff unabashedly so, and they just think they're safe. Um, and, they, and God himself is even amazed that they can do all of these things, all of these abominable things, as he says, um, like lying, and, and and this isn't the abominable things that you might think of. These are things that, well, lying, cheating, murder, adultery, idolatry. They do all these things, and yet they still have the gall to walk into his house and claim safety. They, they you know, he's like, you do all this stuff that I don't like, stuff that you know I don't like, stuff that you, I told you I don't like. And you come into my house with all this garbage and you're like, oh, we're safe here. We feel so safe in your house. You're going to protect us. You're going to take care of us. Um, They seek safety even though they're not living and abiding by the covenant that he made with them in the first place. And he's just kind of shocked by it. Kind of amazing that we can shock God, but we can, especially when... We behave like jerks, I guess. Anyway, and they do this, he says, because they've fallen prey to a lie. They've fallen prey to to deceptive words. They trust in these deceptive words, um, which lead them to believe that God will protect them no matter what, and then that he will maintain them no matter what they do, that he just thinks they're so just that cool and so awesome that no matter what, he just loves living there. He just loves being with them and loving them so and so much that they could do anything they want, but God is still going to protect them. God is still going to keep them safe even though they don't live in him in relationship with him like they're supposed to, even though they've just ignored the covenant that they made with him. Um so, you know, and it's because they have the temple of the Lord there. They think that because they have the ark and because they have the temple in their midst, that God will keep them safe. That, you know, this is the fallacy that they've fallen prey to. This is what they presume, and they presume too much. Like, and God warns them that the only thing that's going to keep him there, that's going to keep him dwelling with them, it's not the temple. It's it's not any of this. It's not the fact that he's had a house there for, you know, decades. Um, God warns them that the only thing that will keep him there is repentance and obedience. He says that's the only thing that will allow him to dwell with them. Matter of fact, he begs them to do it. He's like, look, repent of your ways, do what you're supposed to do, live according to the covenant, and I, so that I can dwell with you. And it's not that God doesn't want to live with them, doesn't want to stay with them. It's just that they're being such abominable people that he just can't. He can't abide by it anymore. So, but they still have fallen prey to these deceptive words. He says they put their trust in these deceptive words that, you know, 
they live there. They like they have the temple, and that's that's the, what the deceptive words are. Um, it says, "This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord." Those are the deceptive words they trust in. And he goes, "Okay, great, fine. My house is here. You've got the temple. I didn't always live here." He points out to them a fact which they know they should know, but somehow they may have forgotten. He didn't always dwell in the Jayberg, so to speak, or Jay Vegas, however they want to call it, uh, in Jerusalem. He used to have a really nice glamping site in Shiloh, right? Now you're thinking, Shiloh? What? That sounds familiar. Well, he, it should because, you know, he had his, his really nice mobile home there. Um, we called it the Tabernacle. And he lived there for nearly 400 years. Matter of fact, that's where he met Samuel for the first time. Um, but guess what? They got out of hand too. Um, and so he left. And didn't leave in a good way either. Things kind of fell apart and Shiloh was pretty much torched. So he's saying to them, don't get too attached or too comfortable the fact that I built a house in your town. You saw what I did to Shiloh. Anyway, that's the DBR for today. Get out, enjoy the day. We'll talk to you later. We'll see you tomorrow with another DBR. Boop.